Hi everyone, welcome to Calm or MGMT 1102 Introductory Accounting 2, otherwise known as Management Accounting. You may hear <laughs> at times uh, a little, I don't know, like a, a little noise and you might be like, what is that? And that is a French Bulldog Guinness. Uh, I'm sure I'll show you pictures in a future lecture. However, uh, when I record, he likes to sit on my lap and as a bulldog does, they breathe a little he bit heavier. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, if it really bothers you, uh, let me know and I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, this is a co-taught course. I will be providing these weekly mini lectures and videos and my colleague, the co-instructor for this course, Professor uh, Yutian Lee, will prov be providing you the tutorials each week. So uh, there's two tutorials. You are registered in one. Uh, please go to the tutorial that you are registered in. So I'll probably either refer to them in the future as tutorial or tutorials. Just know you're responsible to going to one a week. We, Yutian and I, in addition to our TAs, Brianne Pelletier and Bishu Handa, will have office hours as outlined in the syllabus. But before I get into the official course contact, uh, content, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. Click, click. Uh, so my name, uh, Sam Taylor. I have a couple, couple versions. If we're talking about my LinkedIn self, uh, I have a professional master's in education. I'm also a chartered professional accountant, uh, a chartered accountant. I'm firm trained, uh, so big four EY Calgary. And I was the chief financial officer of a public company by 25 uh, years old. I then worked as a location independent consultant, so traveled around the world, helped out uh, clients in financial reporting and um, as well as education consulting. And then uh, that led me here to Dal in 2018. If you met me at a coffee shop, uh, you probably know that I like coffee. Uh, maybe you'd find out that I love my dogs. Uh, I have another one, uh, Bambi. She is a Chinese crested and she is a rescue. She is independent, more independent than the French bulldog. So she does not need to be on my lap and will not be breathing near the microphone. Uh, I prefer beaches to mountains and a sense of humor can go a long way oh man uh like because life is life is ups and downs like sometimes in school you know you got a bad quiz you gotta step up and go write another one the next day uh and having a sense of humor trying to zoom out have a big picture you know stub your toe you laugh you know see somebody else stub their toe try not to laugh when they're watching you know anyways uh so sense of humor definitely value that um in other people and i'm um, trying not to take myself too seriously although i will tell you i take profiting very seriously so um this course is set up with your success in mind to make it manageable as well as um fulfilling something that you can hopefully Take now, see the value, as well as think back over the next four years, see the value, and hopefully, uh, as many of my past students have seen, when they reach out to me, you know, five, 10, uh, 12 years later, and say, hey, I remember that thing that you said, and I'm like, which one? And they tell me, and I'm like, oh yeah, sort of. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they end up seeing some value many years later, which is awesome. Uh, prof classroom version, I really like it when students have the right answer but I freaking love it when students have the wrong answer. So try me, whatever version, you know, if you post a question to the discussion board and you attempt an answer like, oh, I see this, I'm struggling with this, I think it's like this because, great, you're probably on the right track. And if you're not, like you tried. I'll take whatever kernel of rightness you have, you know, maybe beef it up a little bit, uh, tweak it a little bit, but we'll go from there. Uh, if this was an in-person lecture, I, you know, would do the same thing. So lots of these things translate. It's just good to try because you're probably closer than, uh, than you would think. And really learning, like you're learning this material. If you master this material, you'd be teaching the material. You wouldn't need to learn it. So please come in, engage, get stuff wrong, learn, get stuff right, learn. Um, it's all good. Okay. So this is our textbook. You will either have the floppy version, so like the paperback version, or you will have the online only version. 
but as outlined in the syllabus, uh, you will have um, online connect. So you definitely do need to have connect. Hold on a second and I will pull up the syllabus. Okay, here we go. And this is found on your Brightspace content administration tab. Okay, so you will see office hours for uh, Prof UTN and myself, and you will um, see how to get a hold of us there. You will see how this course is graded, and you will see our course textbook right here. So that is the 13th edition, uh, Libby either online via connect or hard copy, which is like the soft floppy copy uh, versus connect. Either way, you must have connect with the course. That is the online code. And the online copy is actually found through connect. So that you will see uh, this book, um, 13th edition. Please post to the discussion board if you have any questions, but the library has several copies uh, available online uh, as well through our course. So if you go to content administration connect, you will see some slides on how to get the book and how to link it to the course. So you go through our course on D2L for everything. Say you buy the textbook in um, the bookstore, then you go to our course and you click the connect through the instructions, content administration connect. And from there, you'll be able to hook up your online book to our Brightspace course. Okay. So um, these slides you will see are made from the base of the textbook slides. And the reason for this is as follows. Accounting is its own language. However, within um, the language of accounting, the language of business, there are many different terms, like sometimes three, four, five different terms for the same thing. And when you're a learner, um, and when you're new to learning something or even intermediate to learning something, uh, it's quite frustrating, I find, uh, when things have several different names and there's no consistency. It's almost like you feel like you need to learn five times as many things, but even worse than that, because then they're like interchanged. So anyways, I want to use the same language that you will see in the textbook, that you will see for your online um, uh, assignments, that you will see on your tests that you will see on your final exam that you will see in your tutorial quizzes. So all of these things have been consistent. So that is why as a base for these mini lecture videos, I will use the slides that were made by Ruth Ann. So thank you, Ruth Ann. However, um, Ruth Ann's great, but uh, we definitely have different teaching styles. So I take her slides as a base. I remove some stuff. I add some stuff so I don't change the way that the terminology is, but I'll do things like add in questions, um, add in my own commentary. I tend to make uh, the slide word, uh, the wording on the slide less uh, verbose so that you get to see the key terms. Uh, so much, um, much streamlined. That way you can watch the lecture videos hopefully just once, maybe twice, but then you have the slides to kind of like jog your memory and you can go back to the key points there. All right, this video is getting rather long. However, it's long for a typical video. However, it is relatively short for an intro video and that's just because like we're introing things. There's a few things to go over before we actually get started in the course. So the last thing I'd probably want to mention is, about the course is that you are being graded. You have 15% for the textbook readings and smart book pre-work. Now, this frame, this is how you're being graded. This is the underlying framework. This is the education research stuff. Basically, what this means is this course is based on evidence uh, evidence-based teaching principles so that it's the most effective and efficient way for you to learn. And then mapped onto this is how you are evaluated. So there isn't a disconnect between what we're asking you to do and the most efficient and effective way for learning. So how this course is structured is uh, you are expected to read the textbook and complete the smart book pre-work prior to watching these mini lecture videos, ideally. you That is worth 15%. Uh, it's accessed via Connect for the smart book, and they're due each week Monday, with the exception of week one, because 
we're here. We, we're not expecting you to somehow get in and, um, you know, do a bunch of work on the first day. However, that means that there will be two due next week. So please use your time this week uh, accordingly. So this is worth, you'll have 10 of these. The lowest two are dropped. You should be able to complete all of them. They're dropped if you are sick and miss one. They're dropped if you just don't want to do one or I guess two. Uh, they're dropped if you have performance that's lower than the other ones. So they're dropped. There's no additional drops if you're sick or anything else. Like just everybody gets a freebie too. Uh, from there, you're expected to watch the mini lecture videos like these ones. Then complete some practice problems, which are available via Brightspace content. Uh, each week, you're expected to go to your one scheduled tutorial, and there will be two quizzes held in your assigned tutorial. When you scroll down, you will see the schedule for your quizzes, your smart book, um, which chapters, and um, your tests. So speaking of tests, there are three, two quizzes um, held in tutorials as outlined in your syllabi. Then there are term tests. There's going to be three. The lowest one is dropped. Uh, these are virtual and done um, as outlined in your course outline. And then there's a final exam, um, which is going to be during the registrar's um, official period at the end of the term. So this is what you're graded on. This is why you're graded on it. And this is when those items should occur and what the uh, examinable content is. So all of the information for you to meet your definition of success for this course is available in the syllabus as well as when you can meet with, um, with myself or the other professor or our TAs. So our office hours are right at the beginning. Um, we will be updating this um, before, so we have no office hours for our TAs the first week. So we'll update this prior to week two um, with their office hours, and they will be held in row 4084. My office hours will be online via um, Calendly, so click here and you can see when that's available. And uh, Professor uh, Lee, her office hours will be Tuesday or Thursday, uh, 1 to 4 p.m., or by appointment via email. If you have questions, uh, the fastest way is to go to office hours for myself, um, Professor Lee, or RTAs, Brianne and Vishu. Then, um, if you don't want to wait for office hours, maybe it's a weekend and you'd rather uh, post it, you can post to the discussion board, and that is an anonymous post if you choose uh, for the other students. Uh, however, Prof Lee and I can see what uh, who is posting. So just as an FYI, it's anonymous-ish. Um, and if you have, so for the reason for this is there's uh, over 300, I think close to 400 students in this course. It's a co-taught course. Uh, our emails tend to have, like I, I know I personally receive 100 to 200 emails uh, each day, sometimes every two days, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less, but I don't want your email to get lost. Um, and similarly, uh, it's a lot of students have said in the past that they really benefit when they see um, when they see posts from other students and they see the answers and they're like, oh, that makes sense. So anyways, that's why that's there. But of course, office hours are really super efficient because sometimes there's back and forth, back and forth. And um, when you can do back and forth in person uh, or, you know, or online, but both synchronously, then you can really solve the problem or get the understanding with that back and forth. Okay. So just going back here, what a typical week will look like is uh, a chapter a week, unless it's a really big chapter, then we might get two weeks for it. Uh, or you're right before a final exam, you might get a final exam review, you will get a final exam review. Um, please do not book any traveler or anything because you do have a final exam period for which there'll be no makeups. Uh, each week you will have a smart book uh, pre-work due um, the Monday before the first tutorial. And then uh, you're expected to do practice problems as outlined in the content practice problems that are assigned. So um, at a minimum, you'll have a smart book pre-work starting next week. Uh, week one is due at the beginning of week two. And week two is due at the beginning of week two. And then some other weeks, you may also have, in addition to that, a term test. 
So this will be done online. You'll have 60 minutes to complete it. Uh, anytime from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. This will be virtual via Connect. And there'll be a sample term test available for you a week in advance. So chapters one, two, and three. Great. Um, then the following week, you will do, you will continue to do the same, have the smart book due each week. And then right before the break, you will have a quiz on chapters one through five um, during your scheduled tutorial. Okay. During reading week, um, we take this fully off. We encourage rest and relaxation, uh, at least from this course. You'll have others, I'm sure, um, and you may or may not choose to use your reading week um, for reading. That is up to you, but we do not have any large tests or deliverables due until the week after, for which we will then be having an, uh, your second term test from um, same thing, so 60 minutes on the Friday um, from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Continue along where you're reading, doing practice problems, going to, to your tutorial, doing your smart book, watching the mini lectures, and then you will have your third term test. Remember, you get to drop one. So if you're sick, if you don't feel like doing it, or if you attempt all of them and you just have a low, lower mark, it's gone and it's all good. Um, however, there aren't any other exceptions because the exception is built in for everyone. Okay. Um, and then you will have your last quiz during the final exam review um, that will take up um, the, the last chapters here that were assigned. Okay, and then our final exam. So people, um, I really enjoyed, uh -huh. uh, I really enjoyed getting to kind of say hello in this intro video. We will get into the quote meat and potatoes of this course in the next slide. So thank you so much for listening and I'll see you there.